carbon and its compounds lecture number 3 in this lecture we will be discussing about functional groups and a whole new concept of detergents coming to functional groups an atom or a group of atoms which when present in a compound gives specific property to that compound regardless of the length and nature of the carbon chain is called as a functional group now let us learn the rules for writing down a functional group the main rules to be followed are the free valency or valency of the group are shown by a single line the functional group is attached to the carbon chain through this valency by replacing hydrogen atom or atoms replacement of hydrogen atom by a functional group is always in such a manner such that the valency always remains satisfied the functional group replacing the hydrogen is also called as a heteroatom because it is different from carbon which might be nitrogen sulfur or a halogen or anything nomenclature of functional groups given below are the different types of no functional groups and its nomenclature please have a look IUPAC nomenclature for organic compounds First we have to select the longest carbon chain as a parent chain If at all there is a double or triple bond present in the carbon chain it should be included in the parent chain If a functional group is present the carbon chain should include the functional group also Number the parent carbon chain in such a way that the functional group or the double bond or triple bond etc gets the least number or the lowest number remember here that this aldehyde and carboxylic acid functional groups are present on the terminal carbon chain identify the identify the name and position of the functional group or double bond or triple bond or the side chain the name of the functional group is written with a prefix or a suffix as given in a table which has been already shown before if the name of the functional group is to be given as a suffix the name of the carbon chain is modified by deleting the last e and replacing with with an appropriate suffix given below is an example for an ketone remember that in a compound which has the carbon containing functional groups the name of the word root will include the functional group atom also if the carbon chain is unsaturated then the suffix will be an a and if it's an sorry it would be an e if it's an alkene and an i if it's an alkyne now we have discussed enough on nomenclature Now let's move on to the different types of reactions involved with a hydrocarbon. The first of this type would be combustion reaction. In this reaction a substance is burned in the presence of oxygen gas. Carbon in all its allotropic forms undergoes combustion. Given below are two examples. Please have a look. In both the cases CO2 gas is evolved. Oxidation reactions. This reaction involves the addition of oxygen atoms or the removal of hydrogen atoms. A 
popular example is of an alcohol being oxidized to form a carboxylic acid. Given below is a suitable example. Here the KMnO4 is an oxidizing agent. Addition reactions. As the name suggests, in this reaction, a new atom or a functional group adds on to the given compound. This reaction is more predominant in unsaturated hydrocarbons. Given below is the schematic of how the reaction occurs. Now let us learn about substitution reactions. Again, as the name suggests, in this reaction, an atom or a functional group will re replace an atom or a functional group that is already present in the given compound. In the given example, we can clearly see that a chlorine atom replaces or substitutes one of the hydrogens of the methane. Now coming to the reactions of ethanol, just have a look. Similarly we have the reactions of ethanoic acid, again just have a look ok. So in the upcoming section of this lecture, we will be discussing a whole new topic of detergents and how a detergent works. Coming to the introduction, before I tell you about a detergent, we first need to know about a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that causes a reaction to occur or proceed at a different rate without react without the reaction actually being affected now coming to soaps soap is nothing but a sodium or potassium salt of a lo long chain of carboxylic acid let us see the structure of a soap molecule the structure of a soap molecule will consist of a long hydrocarbon tail at one end which is hydrophobic in nature the other end of is the ionic part which is hydrophilic in nature given below is the structure have a look cleansing action of soap when a soap is at the surface of water the ionic end of the soap orients it towards the water and the tail part which is the hydrocarbon part it goes away from the water part thus a cluster of molecules are formed in the arrangement shown this formation is called as a micelle or micelle soap in the form of a micelle is able to clean and since the dirt will be collected in the center of the micelle now the missile will stay in the solution as a colloid and it will not come out together. This is because of the ion-ion repulsion. Now when water is agitated, the dirt gets suspended and we get a clean surface. So when hard water is treated with soap, a scum is formed. This is caused by the reaction of the soap with the calcium and magnesium salts which are actually responsible for the hardness of water. Now coming to detergents. Detergents are generally ammonium or sulfonate salts of 
long chains of carboxylic acids. Detergents do not form a scum with ho hard water. This is because the charged ends of these compounds do not form insoluble precipitates with the calcium and magnesium salts present in the hard water. Thus they remain effective in hard water also. Now let us see the differences between a soap and a detergent. Soaps are sodium and potassium salts of long chains of carboxylic acids, whereas detergents are generally ammonium or sulfonate salts of long chains of carboxylic acids. Soaps are not effective for cleaning in hard water, but detergents are effective for cleaning in hard water and soft water as well. Soaps are biodegradable, but detergents are not biodegradable. The end. Thank you.